Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. Hi, I'm Jessica Fast. We are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing. And today, I think by popular demand, because I know we've gotten a lot of questions on this one, we're talking about co-writing and all of the things that every co-writer should know before they even start, I think. So that's going to include what it looks like querying, um, how you get an agent, what kind of considerations you have to make, whether you need an agreement, what it looks like when you get a publishing agreement, all of those fun things. I have to say one thing that I don't think we're going to talk about unless you have different thoughts is how co-writers work together. No, 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 no. Just the logistics of it. I yeah, think. because I, I think how you write together is going to so be happy. personal. It's so personal. I mean, I, you know, so. I've heard of many different ways. Like I've heard some people do different POVs. Some people write the whole thing together. So. Yeah. Up to you and your co-author. We're That's, talking to you. That is not our problem. Not, no, it's not our job either. We're talking about the business logistics of it and, and how you're going to work together um, to get the book published. So um, let's start with querying. So you've written the book already, right? We're past that. Or maybe we should start before that. We should start with how you even get started doing it. Yeah, I think one thing that is really overlooked when co-writers get together is an agreement. And I think... Before you even sit down and write a page, you need to have an agreement. Um, how, when the book sells, how is the money going to be split? You know, how are you going to handle things like copy edits, marketing? You know, what are you going to do if one of you is really savvy in marketing and doing all the social media? What's the expectations for the other one? Um, what, you know, what about searching for the agent? You know, what if, how are decisions going to be made on what agent to work with or what publisher to work with? But more importantly, it, it has to be about responsibilities. What happens if you finish the book and then you break up? Who gets the book? Who's going to query the book? How is that going to look? So, you know, the point of a contract or an agreement is always to um, protect everybody in case of a worst case scenario. I think it's really important to do this. I have actually been in situations as an agent where um, I had co-authors and we went and sold the book. And as we're negotiating the publisher deal, it came to light that they didn't have an agreement and the, one of the co-authors wanted to quit. They didn't want to do the deal now. And it was messy. And um, had they had an agreement in place, if one of them decided they wanted out at any stage, there would be a solid plan and it would have been less messy. I heard someone recently say that they thought that the agreement would make it super professional and make it awkward between the writers. I actually think it does the opposite. I think what it does is it covers you for every eventuality. Like you said, Jessica, protects each author as they wish to be protected, but it does that without the falling out right? Like without having to get to that point where you have a messy breakup and then you're like, we're never friends again because you've already agreed on something. And it's yeah. just takes all the guesswork out of it, takes the stress out of it and it takes the fighting out of it. So if you do decide this isn't going to be right for my career, I'm going to go a separate way. And then your contract says that the book idea just moves on, like it just dies. Then you both know that's how you separate. Or yeah. if your contract says that if one decides to leave, the other can pursue it then you can leave, like we know what's gonna happen. You yeah. also, I think money is a very sticky situation with everybody. So it's good to know upfront that you're gonna split things evenly or you're gonna split things 75, 25, whatever you're gonna do. It's good to know that upfront. This way, when you get that offer from the publisher, it's not like, okay, well, I did most of the work, so I should get 25,000, you should get 10. You should never have that conversation when there's money involved. You should have that conversation before money. Um, so this is really to just, it's to protect your partnership, to protect you individually. And I think to ensure that the book is set up to be as successful as possible without all of that infighting that you just don't need. Yeah. It's a lot easier to decide what to do with $10,000 when it's some dream. Yeah. It's a lot harder to do when it's a pile sitting in front of you. Yeah. And, and when you have so much of the road behind you, right? Yes. Like, I think then you can be like, well, I wrote one more chapter that you don't want that you, Trust don't, want me, that. you don't want that and it really can be pretty simple i don't think you need to go to a lawyer i don't think you need to I, you can actually do a google search i actually believe even a lot of the writers um, groups and that. guilds and all of the things have them where you can and, and and think about it this way 
it's the first step of your partnership to come up with this agreement together because if you can work together on that then you can certainly work together on the book so it's it's a test and if you can't come to terms on that agreement writing that book's not going to be easier yeah it's true <laughs> and if you are starting this process as an agented author ask your agent if they have a suggestion for for an agreement because i know we at bookends do have one that we would supply our clients with a sample of so yep totally um, okay, so say you don't have an agent. How does querying work? I'm, I think I'm going to give you the easiest answer ever. It works the same as regular querying, except both of your names go on there. Both of your bios go in the query. Both of your names are on the manuscript. Yep. Um, with Query Manager, I don't think that you can put two emails in. I think you can only put one. So a suggestion that I have is make an email for the both of you that you can use on that query. This way you both have access to it. You can both submit a query separately. You can split the work, whatever you want to do. But I believe you can only have one email. So make sure that you have a way that you can both access said email. I know I wouldn't want a co-writer accessing my personal email. So we might, like if Jessica and I were doing it, we might do Jessica and James books at gmail.com. Totally do that. Killer book, by the way. And then, and then that's how we would do the queries. If Jessica wanted to make 10 on a Saturday when she's off, but I'm off on Tuesday, I can do my 10. Jessica can do her 10. I think that's probably the easiest way to yep, go. I agree. Um, also, that co-agent, I mean, the co-writer agreement is going to help you when you're trying to make the decision about an agent. So if you're getting an offer of rep, you would both be on the call unless you decide some other way, but I suggest you're both on the call and then on every call, and then you talk together and you come to a mutual agreement on who that agent is going to be. I think it's that simple. Yeah. One thing I would say to keep in mind in terms of expectations when looking for an agent is to remember that you are looking for an agent together for this book. I think a lot of co-writers can get lost in the weeds because they want to find an agent for this book and use it as a way to also find an agent for their individual works. I would not go in with it with that expectation. You should definitely ask the agent about that. But the truth is, it's sort of like signing with an agent with your best friend helping you out, even though they didn't write the book. That doesn't mean your best friend gets an automatic get. If I'm offering to co-writers, I'm offering for this book. I would love to see your next book, but I have to consider your individual work separately than I am with this book. And I think you should look at it that way. I also think that'll make the querying process and the decision process easier because where it could also melt down at this point is if, you know, this is a great agent for this book, but I also write children's books and this agent doesn't do children's books. So I don't want to sign with this agent, but James does because this, you know, and it, we're not looking at it that way. You're entering a, a partnership for a book. And I think you have to see that through all the way. Yep. But also you should have that conversation together about what you're looking for, who's on that dream list. The same way you would do it for yourself if it were your own yeah. book, you should have that conversation together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you should, you know, make the agent list together, divide it up, submit, blah, 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 blah. Yes. Um, okay. So how does, and now the agent, you've done the revisions, how do you get an offer? How does the agent handle their negotiations for two authors? I think there are a few different ways that it can be done. I think in most, well, the contracts anyway, I think in most cases, we, we still treat it like it's one author. We're receiving it's one author. author. Yeah. yeah. We're if receiving. Yeah, go on. No, I was just gonna say we're receiving the offer and we're having the conversation with both of you as opposed to just one of you. And then we handle our job doesn't change because there are two authors. Um, the, I was going to say the only time it changes or can change is in the contracts, because I know that there are some instances where each author might prefer their own contract. And then I know we've done it in the way that I think if it's a co-written book, it's always one contract. We have instances where they're split. Oh, boy. That would be a nightmare. I'm only going to negotiate both contracts the exact same. Exactly. But we have an instance. Oh, this is a separate aside. Naomi, one of Naomi's clients, they had to split it and they did two contracts and it drove me crazy. But I think it's easier to just do one. Yeah. Most publishers will just do one contract for co-writers. Okay. That's the way they're going to want to do it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really important that if the two of you are having a disagreement over the contract, to be honest, that you have that conversation before coming to your agent. One of the things I don't want to be doing is mediating between two of my clients 
So if you have some concerns, you should discuss it. You can bring those concerns jointly to the agent, but don't expect that one of you wants this and one of you wants this. And if they conflict, that it's my job to decide which one's going to be. Yeah, that's just not in our wheelhouse. <laughs> it's not our job to do. And again, it should be based on the agreement. It should not be a problem, but um, it's not going to work out for us at all <laughs> to mediate between two clients. <laughs> and Someone's it, getting mad at us either way. <laughs> Maybe both. Story. End of story. Um, so there is another type of co-writer ship that I want to include, and that's author illustrator co-writers. Um, I don't think it's as common as two authors coming together to write a book, but it does happen. I know I have two clients on my list that are working on a book together too. All of it sort of remains the same. I do think that there's probably a stronger case for, for separating the contracts out in that scenario. Well, I think also um, typically, you know, industry standard is that authors and illustrator contracts are split out. So that would yeah. be what the publishers would expect to do in that case anyway. Yeah, the scope of work is different. So I think in that case, I would probably be more comfortable with the author getting their own contract and the illustrator, especially when it gets down to like subsidiary rights and the way things split between mm -hmm. the two. For an author, it's going to the same book, but typically the advances would be different. The illustrator would get a bigger portion than the author. So I just think it would be easier to separate yeah. that out. Yep. Um, and then I think we can, if it's the same agent, we can sort of negotiate the two deals separately. If it's separate agents, then one agent can handle their prospective client. Um, I, I think a lot of it does come down to how the agent wants to work or agents if there are more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are doing this, it's good to ask your agent up front <laughs> what their preference is. And then this mm -hmm. way, you know, going into it. So there are no uh, no surprises or no unforeseen ways of working. Yeah, and one thing we didn't really cover here that I do wanna talk about is we sort of um, presented this in the terms of authors who are not yet agented. But if there are co-authors who decide they wanna to work together, but they both already have agents for their individual works, um, with the agreement of your agents, that is possible too. And typically the agents will have a conversation on how they wanna handle it in terms of typically, one agent will take the lead when it comes to negotiations. One agent may have most of the conversations or they might be on calls together. They will sort of discuss an approach for negotiating with the publisher and going back. But the two agents will work collaboratively to make that happen. And then in terms of commissions and pain, in that case, there would likely be two separate contracts or two clauses in the same contract specifying that you know, one author is working with one agent and the other author is working in the with the other agent. That can be in the same contract as well. Yeah, and that's usually our agency clause will say how we split the payments too. Yeah. So it could say fifty percent goes to agency A, fifty yep. percent to agency B. Exactly. So that's all possible too. Yeah, it's. I think every situation. It's not. They're not always the same. So I think it is talking about who's involved, what the preferences are, what the comfort level is. Um, and just making sure that you have that plan going into it makes it all a lot easier. All of it. Yes. All of it. So, agreements, 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 have them. Yes. And I, I'm pretty sure the Authors Guild has a sample. I think so too. That I'm was sure. my first thought is I'm pretty sure you can just Google it and it's right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, we hope this was helpful. If you're co-writing, have a good time. <laughs> don't get stressed out. Um, good good luck. luck to you. I, yeah, could good not luck. Do it. I don't think I could do it. I think I'm too much of a control freak. I'm not going to lie. But, <laughs> but thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next week. Bye.